this video, let's talk about what's the right process for you to choose the right university for masters or bachelors here in Australia. Without any further ado, let's get started. I have personally come to study my masters, but you might be here to study bachelors, right? So the first thing that you need to decide is whether you would like to move to Australia to pursue your bachelors or masters. If you ask me, there is no definitive answer, right? For me, I thought, let me study my bachelors back in India then I would have some knowledge and based on that expertise or based on that field of study, I would go ahead and pursue my master's. That's my way of thinking. I would like to put a disclaimer before we even go ahead with this video. I am not a professional, right? So please do not make any decisions based on this video. Always consult a professional before taking any decision. This video is just for informative and educational purposes only. You have made this decision of whether it is for bachelor's or master's, the next step that you are supposed to do is whether you satisfy the eligibility criteria for the student visa of Australia or no. One of the most important eligibility criteria that you must satisfy is you have to be less than 20 years old when you have finished your year 12. So make sure you satisfy this eligibility criteria. Another thing that you have to keep in mind is you need to meet the language requirements. Now every university has got different requirements and we all have a couple of examinations that you can take in order to meet these requirements. For example, we have IELTS, we have PT, we have TOEFL as well. So I have personally given IELTS when I initially moved to Australia. Um, every university, just like how I mentioned, has got different requirements. Uh, you have to understand what is the base requirement. For me, what I've decided was if I get seven bands each and all of the uh, skills in IELTS, it's easy for me to get into any university however let's say for example if you think I would like to get six bands each then that gets trickier because not all universities accept these kind of scores I believe universities accept minimum 6.5 bands so if you are getting seven each or eight each then you are in the safest place there are other few criteria in order for you to meet your student visa requirement but before that I would like to talk about choosing the right course now this is how I have chosen the right course and I believe this would be the formula for you you have to consider the commonality between what was your background what's the future scope and what is your interest if any of the field goes into the commonality of all these three that's the right course that you can choose for me i have chosen ict masters of ict so my background was electronics and communication engineering so ict is pretty much networking so it is part of it there is an amazing scope for that so obviously that also fit and networking was one of my interests. I really loved networking. So when this particular course fit into all of the three blocks, that's when I've chosen that, okay, this is the right course that I have to go ahead with. The reason why I say you need to fit all these three blocks is let's say, for example, let's talk about background. Let's say you have done your master's of computer science and if you are planning to switch your career and go into nursing, it becomes really difficult for you to get your visa until and unless your SOP explains why you would want to have this shift and why only when you're moving to Australia. Another block that you have is future scope. You are going to pay hefty amounts of fees in order to study master's or bachelor's in Australia. And you are going to invest a lot of your time and efforts. And when you study a course, it has to be fruitful for you because you're spending your time, energy and money in this particular course. The next block is interest. Without any interest, you might drop or fail in a couple of units. And what you need to remember is when you fail in a unit or in a subject, you're supposed to pay that money for that subject again and study, which means you have no interest, but you're paying more and more money you are going to be devastated. So make sure you have interest, there's a future scope and you have similar background when you're studying. Awesome. So you have now chosen a course as well. Now the next thing what you need to choose is regional or metropolitan. There are equal amounts of pros and cons of living in regional and living in metropolitan. I personally chose metropolitan because there are way more opportunities, way more people that you can connect to and then way more social life but if you are focused on your settlement and you think okay getting into regional is going to give me extra five points it's easy for my you know PR journey and all of that if you think 
why not go ahead for regional if you have some of your friends family back in regional and they say okay it's worth coming to regional then go ahead and choose that decision but please be very careful when you are taking this decision because it is really it does make a lot of difference now if you want to check which area is regional and which area is metropolitan i'm going to put link down in the description box so go ahead and check that link you just have to include the postcode um i believe state and that's where you will have list of regional areas and list of metropolitan areas once regional or metropolitan is done that decision has been taken you have to choose which state are you going to live in victoria new south wales queensland which state are you going to live in because each state again has its own pros and cons and um if you look in sydney you will have more opportunities melbourne life is amazing i mean if you stay in victoria it's amazing again if you live in adelaide which is south australia it's more quieter and it's more peaceful there if you live in queensland it's more happening again less than melbourne though so you have to choose which state are you going to live in and once that is done you have to list down what are the possible universities that you can get into now when you are selecting the list of universities you have to check if your course is available if you you have to check also if the fees is viable you have to also check if the sub units or the curriculum the course curriculum fits into what you already learned or what you're interested in though the course is same in different universities sometimes the course curriculum changes so which is why you have to get into university website check the course curriculum and that's when you will be able to differentiate so once you have list of universities you apply and you get responses that's when you shortlist the right amount of universities and when you do this you have to take great feedback from known people facebook groups of that university maybe contact any content creators maybe like me someone else who has studied in that university get as much information as possible that's when you choose the right university and here's the process that i have followed and i believe this is the right process for you to follow as well and trust me this is the most important decision so do not take it for granted i hope this video was really helpful make sure you hit like comment and subscribe until i see you next week bye